cars, one of the most popular type of transport in the world. On average, people drive 12,000 miles a year, to which if you were to times that number by how many cars were on the road in 2019 in the UK, that is 394.8 billion miles of car travel every year in the UK. Cars allow your travel to be private, exclusive and fun and allows people to go wherever they want, whenever they want. However, cars nowadays are starting to become more efficient and having that futuristic look about them. But where do performance vehicles fit in? A Bath, founded in 1949, is one of the most legendary racing car brands back in the early 50s, are known as a Bath and C. They were known for their exhilarating performance figures, modifications and tuning parts who was once run by the legendary Carlos Abarth and alongside him, Gio Scalarini. But how did this all come together? You see, it all started at a young age for Carlos. At the age of 11, Carlos was experimenting with his old time scooter, to which had a leather belt to increase the performance of his scooter, beating all the kids in his neighborhood. This led to a bicycle that he rebuilt himself to get the best performance out of it for his first competitive bicycle race in France. At a young age, Carlos always had a passion for engineering as he would try to eke out as much performance he can out of anything he got his hands on. By the time he was 17, he had the ride on the back of a friend's motorbike. The sensation of the power and the handling of the bike made him the true petrol head he was back then. This was leading him to his bright history in future. After working part-time for a coach company designing motorbike and bicycle chassis, back in 1927, he moved on to working for a company called Motorthun, which his dedication to the trade was noticed by Joseph Oransky. In April 1928, he was asked to take part in a race due to a rider with illness, to which he set the fastest lap time in practice. However, Competitors felt uneased by how this unexperienced racing bike driver can set the fastest lap time, causing friction within the race. Allegations were made against Carlos Abarth, saying Carlos was unfairly tampering with his bike. He swapped bikes with Joseph and got another fastest lap time in the second practice. This was the start to something great. This kick started Carlos Abarth racing career into the true petrol head he was, modifying and tuning his vehicles to their full potential. He continued racing up until 1939, which unfortunately Carlos was hospitalized after a horrific racing accident in Ljubljana. However, there were more challenges ahead for him. As of the 1st of September 1939, Britain declared war on Germany, starting World War II. Because of this, Carlos was commissioned to join the migration movement out of Yugoslavia and making his way to Slovenia, Italy. So Carlos loved anything to do with internal combustion engines and always eked out as much performance he could as of anything he can get his hands on. So what has he left us with today? Well, this. This is the Abar 595 Turismo. This little pocket rocket has a five-speed manual gearbox with 165 brake horsepower with 230 litres of torque. From its 1.4 turbocharged engine, it can do 0 to 60 mile per hour in just 7.3 seconds and only weighs a little above one ton. But what does this all mean? You see, modern cars engine engines coming out today are getting smaller and smaller to fit with modern regulations. This means cars with internal combustion engines in the modern day, some are becoming less powerful to their previous predecessors, as three cylinder engines are becoming more and more popular. Like the GR Yaris, with its three cylinder 1.6 engine, it can produce high performance figures in the 250 horsepower range. However, you still might find the experience is different in a bath. Back when Carlos was working for Motorthun, he used to upgrade his exhaust systems to make better performance out of his vehicles. Every year, he produced over 300,000 different exhaust systems, which is probably the reason why a bath sounds like it is today. What if this isn't good enough for you? The standard 595 Turismo comes with a bath standard exhaust system. However, this isn't the only exhaust system they make. They also make the record monster exhaust. 
So, modifying your bath isn't uncommon, as 80% of people who took our survey have modified their bath. And one of the most popular engine mods being a remap. But why do we do this? I'm here at Aero Auto to see why we remap and modify our cars. Who are Aero Autos and what service do you provide? AR Autos is an independent Alfa Romeo and a bath specialist. Services wise, we would cover just about everything apart from paintwork. Whether that be performance tuning, servicing, routine repairs, maintenance, and just general upkeep. We're in Bishop's Waltham, Southampton, um, about a 15 minute drive from Fairham. Why do you think people remap and modify their baths? I think the popularity of doing it to the baths is they're drivable cars. Um, people that own them see them as a driver's car which are they're, they're fun so if you can spend a bit of money uh, and enhance that experience then why wouldn't you what are the advantages of a remap compared to modified parts um i suppose the advantages of remapping is as we were just saying you know you get the power delivery you get more drivability you get more bang for your buck but without having to have necessarily the loud exhaust and things like that. So if you commute into the sh shop in a residential area, you can drive it completely normally. And if you're out on a sunny back road on a Sunday afternoon and you want to have a bit of fun, the power's there on a switch. The thing is with the modified part side of it, it's a bit more costly. And you've got to do so much more for such little difference. As well with the software changes, it's a two hour, plug it in and it's done. And it's easily reversible. When modifying your bath, when would you need to consider upgrading brakes, suspension and the like? It all depends what you're planning on doing with the car. If you're just going to remap it for a bit more poke at the weekend, you'll, you'll be okay on the standard brake setup. If you're going for big power on a racetrack, then I'd recommend that you do the brakes straight away. You know, these cars are designed to have 185 horsepower-ish tops with them standard brakes. If you're going to start running more power than that, then I'd do the brakes straight away. When would you recommend an LSD? Again, it comes down to the use of the car. If you're driving on the road on a day-to-day -day basis, you really aren't going to notice a difference with an LSD or not. The time you'll notice that is on track days. What are the Abbas weak points when modifying? Drive shafts. Because they're the standard size drive shafts, same as the Fiat 500s. Um, and the joints wear. You know, if you're on and off the throttle a lot, the CV joints wear. Uh, you know, we tend to do loads of them. Loads of them. I think our own one's gone through two sets already. So we're trying to find a, another drive shaft that can be used or a different designed joint so you can replace it once and forget about it. But other than that, I can't really think of many weak points with them. The biggest problem is drive shafts or intercoolers, the standard intercoolers. Obviously the standard ones, you've got the two little ones each side. On paper, they're more efficient than a big front mount because there's more surface area, right. but there's less cold air delivery. Mm. So if you're gonna start looking at, you know, TDO4 kits, hybrid turbos, we'd always recommend a, a front mount just because the delivery of air is quicker than through the standard intakes. What do you think will happen to a bath after the ban of diesel and petrol cars in 2030 and how would this affect your business? Do you know what? I haven't given that much thought yet. However, I think they will move, a bath will move with the times. They've got to. They've got a very successful car and if they weren't to move with the times and go down the electric route, I'd be amazed. And the thing is, although it's new technology to a lot of people, including ourselves, you've just got to move with the times, you've got to adapt. You know, when it, when it comes to modifying cars, they're still going to have suspension, cosmetics, brakes, things like that. Um, it's just going to be a case, a learning curve for everyone, a very steep gradient come that time. But yeah, I don't think it will cause a problem. I think once you get to 2040, 2045, it'll be a, a normal thing. No one will even talk about it anymore. In the future, we can still modify electric and hybrid vehicles. Yes, absolutely. You know, motors, batteries, they still have suspension, steering, brakes, wheels, tyres, cosmetics. You can modify anything. If you've got the imagination there and the things are available, I don't think it will change. By 2030, the UK government has announced that they plan to ban the production of diesel and petrol cars. This means manufacturers like a bath will have to make the decision whether they are going to change from ICE to electric or even hybrid systems, or nothing at all. The government call it the Green Industrial Revolution to tackle climate change 
and to create jobs in nuclear energy. The government has given £4 billion to implement the 10-point plan to get rid of ICE vehicles. However, critics say that the money is not enough for the scale of this challenge, and critics are comparing it to the massive HS2 project, as it is a 125th of the HS2 £100 billion budget. What does this mean for a bar? And how much longer are they going to be around for? Will car enthusiasts' communities still exist? What will our sports cars look like after 2030? Only time will tell.